I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX. Hey everybody, so here we have this Western Digital WD5000KS hard drive from 2006. It's a 500 gigabyte hard drive from the early days of serial HDA or SATA. The reason why I say early is because you look at the back of it. Well, for one, the drive from 2006, so we are talking about the early years of it. Uh, you can see here we have a SATA power connection, but also a traditional 4-pin MOLX connection that you would have on older drives, like IDE drives. So this was from the era when, um, of course, SATA drives were new and a lot of power supplies out there were still lacking this new connector at the time. So you could still, you'd still be able to use an existing power supply without having to use an adapter or modify the, uh, the uh, output cables. But, uh, this drive is actually bad. Um, it's you go power it up, it uh, shows it, it gives you the uh, clicks of death, and it will try three times to start up. And every time it does, it, it starts up, it clicks and then shuts off. I don't have any important files on here. Matter of fact, I think this was pulled out of an e waste bin or something. I forget where exactly it came from, but this was actually out of an external enclosure. I shucked the enclosure. Um, not to be confused with the uh, recent video of me uh, testing out uh, hard drive performance of a uh, shucked hard drive, an older hard drive. Uh, that was a different one. So, Since this drive is bad, let's have a look inside of it. So, one thing I should note is this thing is heavy. I mean, for 500 gigabytes, it's definitely heavy. I'm going to say it probably has three platters in there. So, I mean, it's definitely, when you look at the bottom of it, it's, <laughs> it reminds me of, like, let's say, uh, uh, a 4 terabyte or heck, an 8 terabyte drive from today, I'd say. Um, I'm getting ready to soon order a new drive for the Mid Tower Deluxe because it's going to need a storage upgrade here in the coming months. So, I'll know for sure on that. But, uh, anyways, that being said, let's go ahead and get this open. So, first thing we got to do is, uh, peel off all these stickers covering the screws. Okay, so now we're going to break the seal. Oh, there's actually, hang on a second, there's actually, I think, one more screw in the center that I missed. Nice and camouflaged in there. Oh, and of course, it's a different size, too. So dang, even got a screw in the center. So we gotta break the seal. And to do that, we're gonna use a uh, a flathead screwdriver. Just twist and let it peel up. And we are officially breaking the seal, the airtight seal. I'll never forget one time when I installed a Western Digital drive into a case. The drive, instead of going into the right spot in the uh, 
drive cage where there were actually a lips um, that held the course around the drive went to slide in and of course the actual lip in the case went through here and guess what it did it sliced the uh, seal pretty much wrong with the drive it wasn't brand new it was actually many years old so it wasn't like a real big loss or anything but sometimes you gotta be careful with these things it's funny sometimes when you gotta open up these old hard drives it sounds like you're opening up a can of spam try my best not to get my fingerprints on that platter there's probably another yep yep there's another there's a hidden screw <laughs> under this label feel it right in there Do that in order to keep the uh, label intact. Oh, forget three. There's four platters in this thing. This thing is a monster. Yeah, guys, get a look at that. One, two, three, four platters in this thing. So I think in the last video. Um, I was, of course, thinking this was a three-platter drive, and just a few minutes ago, I was thinking this was a three-platter drive, but no. We actually have four platters in this thing. What a monster. What a freaking monster. Okay, so I figured I'd bring this thing over here to this power supply, and uh, plug it in and watch it run. Okay, so that time it didn't even click the head, it just started up and uh, wound down three separate times. Yeah, last time it actually uh, clicked the head. Okay, one thing I did notice, um, it appears there may be like a scuff on this platter. Well, I do see some, I do see something in there already that perhaps maybe could indicate an issue. But who knows, maybe this could have landed on there just a few minutes ago, I don't know for sure. Yeah, if you look carefully right there in the center, you may see a little speck of dust or something. Okay, that probably just landed there a few minutes ago, but uh, see a spot right there? That could have been from my finger when I was trying to get this thing open. Obviously, guys, don't do this to a drive you care about. If you open up a hard drive, you're going to expose this and turn this. Uh, internal components to uh, dust and things like that and 
all it takes is a speck of dust to mess things up. Uh, when you, uh, for example, if you were to send one of these to a data recovery um, company, they generally work on these things in like certified clean rooms and in places like that. That's one of the reasons why data recovery can be so expensive. Here's you a close look at everything. So it's getting pretty late, so I'm not going to actually dismantle it completely. I'm not going to tear it apart here on this video, but I do plan to tear it apart, save the magnets out of it, stuff like that, and I'll feature that in a uh, third part series on this hard drive. Yeah, guys, it's impressive. Four platters. This thing is a monster. It's it's crazy to think that's a, that was the technology back in 2006 to store 500 gigabytes you had to or at least the manufacturer like Western Digital had to build an absolute monster of a hard drive to store that kind of that amount of data whereas four years later in 2010 Seagate was already doing it with just one platter for example I think the 7200.12 series drives were so I think they were single platter for a 500 gigabyte capacity. I think if you went up to a one terabyte, you did have a two or three platter or something like that. But yeah, just just think four years later, just how just think how far technology had come in just four years. And of course, nowadays we got what eight, ten terabyte hard drives. <laughs> Not sure how many platters they have. But uh, like I mentioned earlier in this video, I'm going to soon be uh, doing a storage upgrade on the Mid-Tower Lux. The last time I upgraded the storage on the Mid-Tower Lux was, I think, 2015. And it has uh, two, uh, two terabyte Hitachi drives in a RAID stripe configuration. It has a single white label four terabyte drive for data, for, for data backup and a... Uh, extra two terabyte Hitachi drive just for added storage. So my data drive, which is the RAID Stripe, um, four terabytes combined, is nearly full. It's got only about 200 gigabytes free. And it doesn't take me long to fill up that kind of space when I'm working on Thunderstorm videos for QCOMP MBDX and of course videos for this channel too. So going to be ordering probably a set of two four terabyte drives run them in a stripe um, may do an eight terabyte for the data backup not hundred certain just yet so I'll get the of course I'll get to see some brand new hard drives of course I won't be opening them up like I did this one but uh so yeah uh, like I mentioned um, I'm gonna feature tearing this drive apart in a part three video so just for now we're going to set this back on top oh yeah this is what the inside of the cover looks like and if you look here you'll see that B it's like silicone it's like a hard silicone or if you want to call it that a little gasket that they install in the factory don't think this is reusable. I could be wrong. I don't know if it would seal, if it would actually reseal. Doubt it would. But uh, anyways, I'm going to set this back on top. Just to try to keep it somewhat clean for the Part 3 series. So anyways, that's opening up this hard drive. And boy, it is a monster. Hope you all enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Well, everybody, that wraps up for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to your channel, and be sure to tick that bell so you'll get notified when new videos are posted. Also, don't forget, I have a whole lot of other interesting videos here on the channel to check out. 
And also, in addition, I have a second channel, Cute Comp MTDX, where I have all sorts of other videos not exactly related to technology. Links to the channels are available at the end of this video. Again, I thank you for your support and thanks for watching this video.